Every now and then the YouTube algorithm serves up something delightful and it's happened to me. How the rhythm section swings. Have any of you seen this video? It is hilarious and awesome. There's actually a lot to learn from it. Already just look at this guitar player. It's on one second, okay? The video hasn't even started. The guitar player is already locked in. <laughs> the saxophone is over here is also locked in. He's actually not even gonna play in this song, but still locked in. Not quite as dialed in as the guitar player. Let's just get started and I want you to just pay attention to this guitar player. Everything he does, it's just like the most snarky, spicy thing. Just let's go. James Drillo on the guitar. Here he comes. That though he plays on all four beats, he presides over two and four. Two, three, four, two. So we, we got our one, two, three, four going. That is it a comes bad down. man if right there. All, none, or some of the so listen to what, hold on, let's go back to our guy's face here. It's just so interesting as a guitar player when there's a band leader like, all right, here, this guy's gonna play something, and he's like, just hold down the groove. You can tell this guitar player is just like, oh, all you need me to do, yo, you're asking a Ferrari to go like five miles an hour here, but no problem, man, I got you. We got our one, two, three, four going. <laughs> it's like somebody asking uh, Albert Einstein, hey, uh, what's two plus two? This is just the most fundamental music lesson. This is the one, two, three, four, you know? It's just so rudimentary, but as you can tell, it's so foundational and, and really fun, honestly, when you're this good at playing your instrument. It's fun to just throw down a groove like this, and as you'll see, it develops. so good you just have to you have to join in <laughs> it cuts it to him about to teach us. so let's talk about some of the chord shapes that uh, this guitar player is going through and just the harmony in general so this beginning section starts off with C minor going to F minor then to B flat major and then we have this little turnaround turn around on this five chord the G and we're back to, this was what I would call like the verse, and we're just kind of going between C minor and this G seventh, but it's kind of insinuating harmonic minor. Kind of just feels like that in this groove. So they come in on the four, that's cool. Here's the B flat. There's that G7, and we hang on it. So as you can hear there, I'm just following the chords right now, but here's where I kind of got interested as I was dehypnotized out of the lore of the gaze from the guitar player. This is actually a really cool chord progression to go over and sort of learn to not only improvise uh, with the lead stuff, but also rhythmically. So think about approaching these chords in phases and once you have these phases understood and under your fingertips maybe then you start crafting an improvisation that includes all these different phases and then you become a versatile well-rounded guitar player maybe hopefully but anyway the first phase i would attack on this chord progression is just learning the triads of these chords just a minor triad here starting with a c minor and you can learn triads all over the guitar neck of course The triads are everywhere, every chord has its own subsequent triad, so we have C minor. Every time that C minor chord's happening, we can rely on C minor triads, and every time another chord's happening, for example, the F minor chord that happens here, we have all those same exact chord shapes as the C minor triads. And then of course we go to the major sound, we just change that minor third to a major third. We can actually make it a sus chord every now and then. It's kind of functioning that way in the harmony, but again, triads.
There's a couple turnarounds. One of them's like this. And the other one's like this. So this one's a little bit more standard. The minor pentatonic or natural minor works over both of them. But the phrase ends with this G7, so you could also throw in the C harmonic minor. You hear how it sort of gives a little emphasis to that natural seventh in the C minor sound. So that's where that theory comes from. And overall, after you have this triad approach, maybe you start to pick and choose notes from those triads to sort of outline the phrase. So once you have that triad approach for that first chord section, the second chord section is gonna seem like a breeze because it's really just two chords, the C minor and the G7. So you can approach it from the triad perspective. Of course, you can have this root third seventh or the major triad, which is hiding underneath. And then when it comes back around to the chords, you can either go to the blues or go to the triads. But what I ultimately end up thinking about is just what I'm playing over the chords, dancing in between the harmonies, maybe some shared tones. So over a C minor chord, and a G dominant seventh chord. We can hear notes that we really want to target just by outlining these chords. So you should be able to hear the sound of the chords changing. So you could hear this pulling us back to this and I didn't actually play those chords. If I did my job, you heard the harmony actually happening behind the melody and that is really the ultimate goal for improvising is how can you find a way to make these chords sing without sounding too much like just playing the chords but also not being too busy and having something meaningful to say. More like this guy, I guess. Hope you enjoyed this little lesson. Uh, how the rhythm section swings, another gem in the YouTube annals of music history. And uh, until next time, keep shredding. <laughs>